Hey everyone, and welcome back. Before we get here today, please make sure that you like and subscribe because it really does help out our channel and it also helps us reach others in need of assistance with these topics. So in today's video, we're going to be covering statics and we're going to be looking at the method of joints to solve trusses. And this will be our third part in this particular series. So we are going to be solving this truss here, which is only made up of three members. So whenever you are solving a truss, if it has not been given to you, the first thing you want to do is you want to get your reactions. So what we're going to have here is we're going to have a pin here at A and a roller down here at C. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to assume that my C sub X is to the left, my A sub X is to the right, and then my A Y is upward. Now, if you can go ahead and get any reactions right away without writing any equations, go for it. So we have this 84 kilonewtons of force applied to the truss. That is the only thing being applied in the vertical direction. And A Y is my only reaction in the vertical direction. So I have to react to that 84 kilonewtons of force, so it has to be going in the opposite direction. Boom, there's one done already. Well, the other two, what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to sum moments, and let's sum moments about point A, taking counterclockwise is positive, and everything has to cancel and be equal to zero. So what I would have here is this 84 kilonewtons of force being applied at here at point B, times three meters for its perpendicular distance. And then I'm going to subtract off C sub X because it's rotating clockwise the way I have it assumed, times its perpendicular distance, which would be four plus 1.25 millimeters going vertically. And that would be 5.25 meters, not millimeters, is equal to zero. So thus C sub X will be 48 kilonewtons. It came out positive. So I assume the correct direction of to the left. And then if you sum forces in the horizontal direction, you will see that A sub X and C sub X are the only horizontal forces, so they have to be equal and opposite. All right, so there are my reactions. So once you have the reactions completed, if they're not done for you already, what you're going to do util utilizing the method of joints is that you're just gonna start at one of your joints. Now, typically it is best, typically, not always, but typically it would be best to start at one of your reaction points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start up here at joint A. So looking at joint A, utilizing the method of joints, I'm going to isolate this joint out, and I'm only looking at the forces, reactions, or members being applied at joint A. So what that means is I'm only concerned with AB, AC, and my reactions here at joint A. I really don't care about anything else when looking at joint A. So what I have here is I have a diagonal member and I have a vertical member. So my diagonal member can apply in the horizontal and vertical directions, and this vertical can only apply in the vertical directions. So everything needs to be in equilibrium here at joint A. So if you were to sum forces in the vertical direction at joint A, you would have your 84 kilonewtons from your reaction, this unknown from AC, and this unknown portion from AB. You have two unknowns there and can't solve for any of them just yet. Well, what about summing forces in the horizontal direction? You only have one unknown horizontal touching joint A because you have 48 over here. So since you have one horizontal here, another over here that is known, you have 48 going to the right. So this would have to be 48 kilonewtons to create equilibrium, and it would have to be going to the left. So with a diagonal member, your arrows can only be going in the direction of the diagonal. So with this diagonal from A to B, we only have the options of this relative to joint A, either down and to the left or up and to the right. Well, since this arrow needs to be going left at joint A, that means we are dictated to be this one, which is down and to the left. So that means my arrow is that way, which means the vertical will have to be going downward since the arrow is down and to the left. All right, so how do we get this vertical portion here? Because as I said, now we're still having two verticals. Well, how do we do this? Well, with trusses, what we can utilize is we can use the following ratio for any diagonal member. So the X force inside that diagonal member, which we just found, which was 48, divided by your Y force has to be equal to the X dimension of that diagonal divided by the Y dimension of that diagonal. And of course, these ratios can be inversed. So <clears throat> just make sure that your X force aligns with your X dimension and your Y force aligns with your Y dimension. So right here, we have our X force. We have our X dimension of three meters and then our Y dimension of 1.25. And then our Y forces are only unknown here. So let's go ahead and fill this in. We would have 48 kilonewtons over my unknown 
ABY would be equal to my X dimension of three meters divided by my Y dimension of 1.25 meters. So you just cross multiply, rearrange, solve for ABY, and that comes out to be 20 kilonewtons. Alrighty, so finishing off the diagonal, the actual axial force inside the diagonal, that'd be 48 squared plus 20 squared square rooted. And that ends up giving us 52 kilonewtons of axial force inside that member. Lastly, let's finish off the arrow. So the arrows have to be pulling away from the joint here, and it has to be pulling away from the joint at the opposite end as well, because this signifies tension. Anytime you're pulling away from your joint you're looking at, that is tension. <clears throat> so the arrows have to be in opposite directions. This one's down and to the left, up and to the right, but they are both pulling away from your joints at each end. Opposite end, opposite arrow direction. All right. So now that I have AB taken care of, now I have AC here. Well, looking at my arrow here, I have 20 kilonewtons that is down over here. I have 48 kilonewtons up over here. So I need an additional force going down at A to add with the 20 to cancel with the 48 that is going upward. So that gives me 64 kilonewtons there. So 64 down plus 20 down will cancel with the 84 up, leaving A in equilibrium. Well, since this arrow is on AC is pulling away from A, it must be pulling away from C as well. Since it is down at A, it has to be in the opposite end, opposite direction, which is up at C. So therefore, we have two members done and only one more to go. And what we can do is we can either go here at joint B or we can go down here to joint C. Well, let's go down here to joint C and see what's going on. So looking at what we have here, we have a horizontal and a vertical that's unknown. We have a vertical that is known and a horizontal that is known. So this one is quite easy to, to solve for here. So we would have 64 kilonewtons, which is up. So that means I need 64 kn going in the downward direction to cancel with this one. So that means it's down into the right. So that means my x force will be going to the right. Well, I have 48 kilonewtons going to the left here. So that means that this has to be 48 kilonewtons. Alrighty, and if you wanted to double check to make sure that this ratio is correct, you would set up the same type of form here to make sure that this ratio of 48 to 64 is the same as the three to four, and it is. That's just another way you can double check your answer. Well, let's finish out our arrows here and our hypotenuse here, our actual axial force, because this is just the XY component inside the diagonal. So, if we were to finish out the arrow here, what we would have, since we are compressing or we are pushing on this uh, joint at joint C, that means that we would have to be doing the exact same up here at joint B. We would be pushing on it. Since we are down into the right at joint C, we would have to be down, or since we are down into the right here, we would have to be up into the left here, opposite and opposite arrow. And then finishing out our hypotenuse here, 48 squared plus 64 squared square rooted, gives me 80 kilonewtons of force inside that diagonal. Alrighty, so there would be the solved truss. Now there is always a way to uh, double check your answers. And the way that you can double check your answers is always look at the joint you have not touched. So which joint did we not look at? We looked at A, we looked at C, we have not looked at B yet. So everything is solved at B. So let's just make sure everything cancels in the X and Y. So if we were to sum the forces in the x direction at b and only looking at b this is what we would have if we take to the right as positive so we have the diagonal of a b here we have 48 kilonewtons which is going to the right because this arrow is up into the right so it means 48 to the right and then we would have 48 here with this arrow acting on b which is to the left it is up into the left so that means the 48 is to the left so it'd be minus 48 and that's what we would have in the horizontal direction. So that is good in equilibrium for the x direction. All righty, now let's look at the y direction at b. It has to be equal to zero, it has to be in equilibrium. So we would have 20 kilonewtons in the upward direction here. So that'd be plus 20. And then I would have 64 kilonewtons over here, which is in the upward direction, so plus 64. And then I would have 84 going down here from my applied force. Remember, do not forget about the applied forces or the reactions when you're looking at your joint. And then we would have minus 84. And of course, that comes out to be zero. 
So therefore my final joint is in equilibrium and then I am in good standing to believe that I have solved this truss correctly. Typically, if you do not have the truss solved correctly or if you have an issue somewhere, typically that last joint will not be in equilibrium. So that's how you would solve that particular truss using the method of joints. So I hope this video is helpful. And if you want to see more problems solve this variety, please check out the other videos on our channel. Also, if you haven't done so already, please like this video, leave a positive comment below, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic day.